what's always a disappointment is seeing great ideas not coming to life. The most important thing is to listen to your customer, to listen to your potential customer, and, and you know really validate your idea. And if if it's not being validated, you know rethink whether you should pursue the idea or not. Fail quickly, fail spectacularly. Otherwise, go the distance. This is Katamar Golan at Venture Cafe Studio. Here with me today is Godfrey Hildbrand. He's a veteran of software industry who has worked with startups since the early 90s. Thank you for joining us, Godfrey. Oh, you're most welcome. So you've worked on a number of tech startups over the past couple decades. Would you tell us more about your background? Sure. Um, I've worked on uh, startups uh, starting uh, way back in pre-internet times in, in the early 90s uh, on the West Coast, moved back to the East Coast, uh, worked in the New York and Boston area, and generally have worked in software. Um, more recently, I joined a very large company in the industry, um, but I've continued to play a mentorship role uh, with um, companies both in software as well as more recently outside of software. So how did you get into working with startups? Um, I, you know, it was one of those things is in the early 90s, I was very interested in uh, the IT industry. I felt that the uh, industry had a lot of opportunity. Um, I was personally inclined toward working with information technology. And so I very deliberately moved out to the West Coast to work in the industry. And what was available, frankly, was mostly in the startup realm. Companies weren't very mature. So that's, that's what was available. So you must have seen a lot evolve in entrepreneurship since then. You know, it's an interesting question. Um, I, I think I've obviously seen the industry evolve. But I think fundamentally entrepreneurship really hasn't changed much over the years. And in fact, you can go back to medieval times. And I think that the impulses and challenges at an abstract level are still very much the same. Um, you've got uh, a real challenge uh, and a, uh, an ambiguity that you've got to deal with and be prepared to deal with. And if you're not comfortable with that, you're not likely to be an entrepreneur. And in the end, being an entrepreneur and, and driving customer is a lot about working with people, whether they're your customers or they're your team members and employees. So it is a very sort of human endeavor. And what kind of role did you usually work in with startups? Um, I've, I've mostly played a role in the go-to-market aspect of, uh, of a company. So that is to say I've held uh, roles in marketing, I've held roles in sales, I've held roles in product management, uh, I've held roles in most recently in sales operations. So I've been much more on the end of taking a product to market as opposed to actually creating a, mar a, a, a product. Having said that, I have played a role in you know, creating product as well, just much less of an emphasis there. So how has the approach changed for going to market over the past couple of decades? I think that certainly the tactics that you execute on uh, are always changing. Um, you know, there used to be direct mail. Direct mail is really largely uh, now useful in, in a very niche sort of domain. And, and so I think that there's this constant sort of arms race where somebody has a great idea, starts to execute on it, and everybody else realizes it's a great idea and burns out that channel. So from that perspective, I think things have changed. Um, I think that there's also a lot more information available. Uh, it was a lot more ambigu ambiguous about who you could reach out to, how you could reach out to people, who were the decision makers. A lot of that's a lot more evident to startups these days. So from that perspective, it's easier to be in the startup business than it was. But in large measure, again, I don't think that starting up a new business from a strategic or a big picture point of view really has changed all that much. It's very much of a human endeavor. What would you say are some of the most effective strategies today for going to market? Wow. Um, I think that really, you It'll know... Probably depend on the type of company. It depends on the, depends the, uh, on the kinds of company. I, I think that, uh, I mean, I'm biased very much toward 
uh, analyzing up to a certain point and really trying to understand and listen to your customer. I think that there's there there are a lot of reasons why startups fail. One of them that I've seen in the past is that somebody becomes so passionate about an idea that they fail to listen to the customer where the customer is saying that's really not that useful or I don't value it that much. So I think that you're still, as much as you were, you know, all the way, you know, back to the Middle Ages and, and beyond, you're in the business of trying to listen very carefully to your customer and validate that what you're doing is something that they're going to buy into. Because ultimately, every customer, every decision maker has got a whole bunch of things that they'd like to have. But there's only a certain amount of things that they can execute on. You do need to understand where you stand in terms of a value proposition relative to the other options and alternatives uh, a company has. So listening to your customers certainly absolutely critical in, in go-to-market, regardless of what your product may be. And any tips on the best ways to reach your customers? You know, you may end up doing something just as simple as, um, you know, looking for communities on, on you know, meetup, uh, you know, looking for meetups, um, looking on LinkedIn, um, doing web searches. Um, I think that every single product has an influencer and an early adopter framework. And I think that with the kinds of social networking platforms that exist and information sources that, you c that exist, you can reach those people very quickly and validate what you've got. And that is the start of your marketing effort, both listening to them to change your product and, of course, you know, getting them to be early adopters and advocate and evangelize. Uh, your product. So you worked at a range of companies. You said you mm -hmm. worked from startups to also some spending some time in corporate. Yeah. So what are some of the things that startups could take away from corporations and vice versa? <laughs> wow. Uh, so I, I've mentioned it. I think that um, certainly large companies uh, are in general, much more disciplined about branding and much more sensitive about branding and, and consistent uh, so that you, no matter in what forum you encounter a company, you're getting the same message. You're not getting mixed messages. Um, mixed messages are poison to sales where people can sort of step back and say, wait a minute, you know, is that really a company... Is that, does that, do I know where that company is heading? Is that company heading in a direction that I want to be part of? Um, so they can, you know, it's easy to dismiss branding, but branding is actually very important. I think that that's one aspect, one thing that, that com smaller companies can learn from large companies. Um, large companies can obviously um, learn a lot about sustaining and supporting a creative spirit from uh, small companies and, and take a look at how they've structured things and frankly a lot of the freedom that exists for individuals to create and express themselves uh, that doesn't necessarily exist in all larger companies and large companies have a tendency to stifle creativity uh, for the sake of discipline and execution and sometimes the balance you know is lost so what, in your opinion, is working well in the current state of entrepreneurship? Wow. Um, generally, uh, on a global basis, there's no better time to be in the business because you can reach a global market, among other things, if you choose to. Uh, you can focus on it. So you've got a lot more options in terms of go-to-market. This is also a time of tremendous change. People are accepting of that change, and there's the technology that enables that change. An entrepreneur who brings those three, three things together and responds to those things, they can have a very successful global company in a very short period of time. You know, Google, Apple, Facebook, and so on. Those are all examples of that. And what are some of your frustrations with the current state of entrepreneurship? What's always a disappointment is seeing great ideas not coming to life. Um, because making a, a, a success of a startup is multifactorial. You can have a great idea, but a bad team. 
um, and you can fail. As I said, I mean, there are a lot of different reasons why a startup fails. And, um, you know, it's frustrating when you see great ideas not come to life. But that's always happening throughout history. And then you've mentioned before that you've also mentored some startups. Mm -hmm. What are some of the most common mistakes that you see made? Wow. Um, I've always been biased toward ideas that are simple, um, that the value proposition is clear. If you can't articulate why somebody should engage in your product and or service uh, in you know, a few short words, there's probably something that you need to rethink in terms of either the way you're articulating it or the fundamental idea behind the startup. Um, I think I also mentioned that uh, some people, you've got to have passion to pursue a startup because there is risk involved. And sometimes people so fall so far in love with their idea and don't understand that a startup is a business and therefore it's got to respond to the marketplace and they either fail to validate or fail to listen to the validation that's being provided by the market. Um, so those are certainly um, common uh, sources of failure, you know, team. You know, in the end, a lot of this is about the right team for the right idea. And without that team and teamwork and a dedication and a willingness to listen to each other and work with each other, you know, things won't necessarily work out. What are some of the most common pieces of advice that you found yourself repeating throughout your mentorship? I think working ahead of the curve, that's the, one of the hardest things that a startup can um, do and master, which is the, okay, if we get this done, what's going to be the next step in preparing for that? Uh, I, that's a really tough thing to master because you are working so hard on getting you know, the next task done without thinking about next plus one. Um, but you have to do that because, as an example, if you're you know, working on trying to get your product together but you're not thinking about the next round of, round of funding, which is necessary to take your, your business to the next level, as an example, or you know, preparing your marketing, your branding, um, so that you know, when you do have a product, you can reach your market very quickly and eff effectively. You know, that is something that's hard to master, and, I, I, and almost every single startup struggles with, you know, like it or not. So what advice would you give to someone thinking of becoming an entrepreneur or in particular just starting a company? I, I think um, plugging in. Uh, I think if you have not been an entrepreneur before, I think you really need to talk to people who have been entrepreneurs before and what that means. Um, you know, I think that the fantasy and the reality are quite different, and you've got to recognize that. And I think that people sometimes go into entrepreneurship with romantic notions. And I think that's great, but it's not sufficient. You also have to have uh, a very clear focus on the business of being an entrepreneur. You know, I've, I've talked to, you know, people who said, I've got a great product and, you know, it'll sell itself. Well, great products don't necessarily sell themselves. So I think that if I was to say one thing that a, a would-be entrepreneur is, should do is talk to other entrepreneurs, learn from their experience. If you are an experienced entrepreneur, I think that you probably is very little advice that I can give you, uh, you know, or at least generic advice that I can give you. Uh, I'd say that, again, I think the most important thing is to listen to your customer, to listen to your potential customer and, and you know, really validate your idea. And if, if it's not being validated, you know, rethink whether you should pursue the idea or not. Okay, great. Fail, fail quickly, fail spectacularly. If Otherwise, you're don't fail. fail. Otherwise, go, all dis go the distance, absolutely. Well, I think that's about it for today. So great talking to you, Godfrey. Thank you for coming down here. Oh, most welcome.